Food unites all of us. I'm going out there to find the people and places where our food stories still exist and bring them back to the table. I'm Chad Breely, and this is Salt Fresh and Field. Innovation can spring from unexpected places. Kevin Kosawan and Jeff Sanger are born and raised Albertans. Interesting and hilarious individuals, they've combined to become two of the most insightful ecological anthropologists in Western North America. They are coming to an understanding of the boreal forest by ingesting it. live in freshwater systems throughout the northern hemisphere and depending on specific geography they are treated with seemingly equal reverence and disdain. They're not a subtle fish. They do after all get their name from a medieval weapon. Their heads are shaped like the end of a pike pole. In the boreal forest of Alberta they are treated as trash fish by some and gastronomic treasures by a select few. This is a barbarian of a fish. Like look how big he was. Yeah, would be out here. Half inch teeth, yeah, like like in the high 30s, uh, inches of yeah, total, yeah. total length, yeah. Jeff Singer is an ex-accountant, if there is such a thing, turned abattoir owner and butcher. Kevin Kosawan left finance to carry uncomfortable camera and sound gear into the bush. Their James Beard nominated series, From the Wild, has told the stories of the hard land of the north, the people who choose to be there, and the cookery that has formed them. When we started the series, I think Jeff and I, the beginning was, can we even go to nature and to go even harvest anything? Kevin sort of made a mandate. He said, uh, you like hunting and fishing? I said, yeah. He said, can you commit 10% of your life to it? I'm like, 10%, of course, that's easy. And he says, I'll point a camera. You know, I like, I like shooting film and he likes shooting animals. <laughs> so it was a match made in heaven. It, it's not easy, it's a commitment. So we're in the field for 40 days uh, each year. Um, you always have something to look forward to, these mini holidays. And it's collecting food and reconnecting with something that we're harvesting from the wild. So as a, a source of food point of view, I don't think it gets much better. Pike falls under the uh, anything that puts a lure in front of them category. They're hungry post-spawn, putting on the calories. They're really, really, really aggressive, as you can see by that skull over there on the rock. Yeah, that's a nasty look. Yeah, part. they've got teeth to latch onto stuff and, and make it dead and then eat it. So this isn't subtle here. People ice fish with spoons and catch pike, which is hard to believe, just something obnoxious that they want to smack. If you're here fishing for pike and you don't use the five of diamonds, I'd feel like I let you down. Pike will hit all, all things. Uh, as is evidenced by the second most popular in Alberta lure for pike, the Red Devil, as it's called. Is there a dedicated pike knot? One that will hold. Gotcha. Have, have you fished before, sir? <laughs> oh, this feels like, okay, I'm going to throw this, can go a distance now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll go a half mile. Pike are a violent, marauding, cannibalistic, slimy trash fish. They are also supremely skilled ambush predators capable of enough aquatic violence to be the subject of mythology and lore. In the spring, as the ice cracks and slowly peels back to allow light into the deep boreal lakes, the pike move into the shallows, into the inshore weed beds. There, they wait for bait fish, ducklings, and smaller pike. As the water warms, they shake their dormancy, and they will attack anything that moves. Like how many casts before you lose your sense of self and identity and then drift into a murderous psychosis? I'm two casts away right now, I think. <laughs> oh! Hit! Hey! Hit! Hit. 
go on? Yeah. But it's either really, really big or it's tangled around a log. We're not, we're not. Oh. Look, it's weeds now. Lunch is ready, gentlemen. Pike are a white fish, and they are delicious. That's pike? Mm -hmm. Pike holds its firmness longer. Oh, okay. Some of the fish get softer earlier and uh, get mushy. Pike's good at holding its texture. I mean, it's, it's mild, but it's not like it, 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 like it transforms into anything you want. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I think, I mean, that probably speaks a bit to any white fish in that it's, they're, they're versatile, they'll pick up flavors we've got wild onion and tarragon in that today, or you could take it a completely different direction once it's put up like that. The more we travel, uh, both for my work and for, for the series, the more I'm obsessed about what is in our backyard. I mean, that, that was one of those kind of tipping points for me as I was visiting family in Denmark. They were feeding me all this great Danish food and they said, we want to come to Canada and eat Canadian food. And I was gravely concerned for a moment and had to really think on my flight back, what, what does that even mean here? What, what do we even have that they don't have? Because we, what I'm going to do, serve them beef? The whole world's got beef. Pork? The whole world's got pork. And what is Canadian food, Canadian culture? Mm -hmm. Well, not canned beaver instead of canned yeah. pike. Or beef. Yeah. yeah. And I think, man, what it really boils down to that we've become real big advocates of is seeking connection to, to food. To, to take, uh, um, you know, rose hips or dried rose hips and use that in my stew or some dried dried oyster mushrooms uh, powder yeah. that we that we collected last spring. That seems a lot less insane than than cinnamon from some somewhere on the other side of the planet. I think that's one of the cool, cool things about this is that you, you can be anywhere and have opportunities to just put the boots on, um, you know, open your mind a bit as to what food is. And then, uh, and then have some fun times with some friends exploring delicious things. I think I've identified another reason why people don't like pike fishing. Because all it takes is like a rod and a couple spoons. And that's not as fun as owning a boat. Even the most voracious predator in the boreal lakes isn't always easy to find. We move to another section of the lake and another stream mouth. And finally, a pike strikes on the most unlikely gear. Oh, Jeff! That was a tough one, fish. Hard one, fish. Oh, man. No leader on a single hook jig. Woo, feeling good about that, man. I have to say, that's a that's a sizable heart, though. Yeah. You have no uh, heart-eating tradition? Oh, really, Ross? We gotta share, I'm not gonna play it into it. We gotta share. What, wait a second, I didn't catch this pike. Yeah, you better eat it. This is you, not me. Yeah, <laughs> use your idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll eat a crunchy little weird pike heart. Mmm. It's like uncooked. No. Mmm. It's getting better. Actually, it's damn good. It has some um, super light notes of fish. What does he have to say about it? <laughs> He's just like, no. That's awesome. Way to go. Awesome work. Woo! From the side of the lake, we head into bush camp to see what we can create with a pike and some fire. Dandelion horsetail, um, we're gonna get some, the fiddleheads obviously, but the fiddleheads are amongst a bunch of nettles. Yeah, that's some food. Perfect. We found them here last year while we were looking for some oyster mushrooms. And this is another one of those backyard things that people don't even re realize are, are there. Yeah, it's as simple as this, man. I mean, they're, yeah. they're just unfurling. And so 
Nicking off. Mm. Holy cow, yeah, they're coming fast. They're like, once you start looking, seeing them, they're everywhere, almost just stepped on these ones. Are you finding any? <laughs> so what do you think? What's your experience with fiddleheads? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is be in the right place at the right time. But yeah, that's bizarre. That's crazy. So simple. And then all those little pop-ups or nettles, those little green oh, right. shoots. And you take the whole thing? The top four to six inches. Oh, okay. Unbelievable. It's so much food. Look, we're done. There's no point harvesting more. Yeah? Super happy. Okay. We can get out of here and go cook. Gummy. Oh, shit. it's bigger than I remember. Pike are slimy. If any of this viscous goo gets on the meat, it will ruin it. In unskilled hands, this is where pike get their terrible reputation as table fare. Pike are bony. It's true. They have an extra set of Y bones that wing out above the spine, almost like an upwards facing rib cage. They are not the easiest fish to fillet. So, taking a cue from cooking another aquatic ambush predator, the lingcod, we decide to bake the pike whole by the fire. We rummage around camp and find young pine, more fiddleheads, garlic, and wild onion. The days are long in the north, and our day ends late. I think that worked. Look at it, Blake. Oh, sexy shit. Look at that. Oh, that's coach. Oh, it's creamy. Well done. Beautiful. Eating with good people around a fire. Eating a fish from the wild, named after a medieval weapon. <laughs>